opportunity of coming up with that creation of independence. And those guys, Thomas Jefferson was like the main, one of the main guys, you know, who, who, who um, was given that assignment of drafting it. 56 people signed that declaration of independence. Of course, it wasn't all on the same day. The, the most that signed it signed on July 4th, and that's why July 4th, 1776 is, that's why July 4th is considered American independence. It was on that day, but as a matter of fact, some of them did not even sign up until October. But basically, that was the declaration of independence. And if you read it, it formed the basis of the idea of democracy and representative governance. Because at the preamble, they said that, you know, um, what, what's the preamble now? That we owe this. We owe these truths to be self-evident. We owe these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and uh, give uh, uh, and, uh, and are born with certain inalienable, inalienable rights. Um, and among these are the right to life, like right to liberty and to the pursuit of happiness. And then they went on to break down the role of government, challenging that government, saying basically that look, the role of government shall be to secure these rights on behalf of those. So where you do not have government, where there is no, because there was also at that time in the age of enlightenment the idea of social contract that not only is government supposed to be there to be lording it over us, but that government is supposed to be there to be doing some things for us while we are also doing some things for them. So that there's that idea of social contract, which was part of the, 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 the basic thought of John Locke himself, that look, this is how society must be. Formed. So America was like the first country that set up itself on those values, on those values, on the idea of democracy, on not just the idea of uh, you know free and fair elections, but also on the idea of the rights of government to people and the rights of um, uh, um, of people to government, basically. So, so it was it was it was it was it was just that, and but it wasn't it wasn't um, it wasn't it wasn't rosy. For America also, because you know, from the moment they declared independence, I mean, Britain, of course, you know, started the war with them and they fought that war. But by 1783, 81, the, the, by 1781, the war was the war was over. America had won because um, France, you know, supported America a bit. Spain also supported America a bit. But Americans, you know, they rose up and they fought. But it was because of the courage of those six men who said that they were going to sign the Declaration of Independence, and that was why it was that was why that was why it, it, it happened the way it did. But the most, probably the most important contribution to understanding American democracy at that time was from, was from some guy, a French guy called Alexis de Tocqueville. Alexis de Tocqueville. Tocqueville is spelled T-O-C-T-O-C-Q-U-E-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E, in case you want to you know, research, research about him more after this. Alexis de Tocqueville was a French guy. He was a French guy who, in like around the 18th century, you know, after America had, had about 20 years of their democracy, there was problems. There were problems in France also. The French, the French monarchy also had also started having problems. Um, you know, you know, you had um, you had you had Louis Louis the Sun King. That was Louis um, that was Louis the Fourteenth. You know, Louis the Fourteenth. I think yeah, he was the Sun King. You know, he had a glorious empire. Had a glorious king. But his son wasn't so good, wasn't such a good guy. Louis the Fifteenth wasn't such a good guy. But they would tolerate him. But then you now had Louis the Sixteenth. Louis the Sixteenth was just you know, probably one of the worst kings of. of of France at that time, you know Louis XVI he was the one who was married to Marie Marie Antoinette. You know Marie Antoinette was just the, the very badly behaved, badly behaved um, princess or queen at that time. You know she, I mean people were people didn't have bread to eat, were you were lavishing and spending and you know enjoying yourself. So people eventually revolted and they revolted and you know they cut off the head of that uh, Louis XVI at that time. But the French Revolution has started now. This guy Alexis de Tocqueville was a part of the aristocracy in France. He started to look at it that there are problems in this place. So, in around the 18th century, he, at the early beginning of the 18th century, he was privileged because he was also a magistrate. He was privileged to visit America. He wanted to study their prison system, to see how the prisons in America were organized so that they can improve the prison system in France. So, after studying it for a while, he, he went back to France. Revolution started in France. He now said, you know what, I'm going to go back to this country and understand democracy, how democracy is supposed to work. So he went there, he studied democracy, and he wrote the book Democracy in America. Democracy in America. And one of you know, I mean, it's available online, you can download it by Alex Tocqueville, but you would have to really stress yourself to, to read it. It's quite bulky, but it's, it's, it. So he captured democracy at its beginning. He was able to look at this form of government called democracy. You know, I mean, the guy came to America to look at how this thing is growing. To look at how how they are building society, how it is helping them to learn lessons for France, but he was also looking at it with a critical eye. 
which mistakes, which what is wrong with democracy that we would also need to adjust that we don't, has given the world a gift of seeing how American democracy was able to, you know, stabilize that country. Because people like to assume that, you know, America, but even today, I think, I mean, I think people can still see that there are a lot of cracks in American society, there are a lot of cracks. But the reason why people, why the, the, um, the society is still more or less stable is because of this ruthless commitment and this ruthless idea of democracy, basically. That it's not a monarchy, it was a monarchy. People would move. I mean, people talk about um, um, Machiavelli. Machiavelli, you know, wrote that, um, he, said, he said that the injuries that men inflict upon themselves are in the long run less painful to them and in the long run more tolerable to them than that which is inflicted upon them by others. In other words, if you do yourself, it doesn't pain you as much as if I do you. Okay? So, one of the reasons why, why, why a society like Nigeria can be so um, tolerant of Buhari's governance is because there's a feeling of now we take our hand to ourselves. You understand? That people voted for this guy. If it was that the guy just came up from nowhere, imposed himself on the whole country, said he's living in Asoro, killed the former guy, stayed there, people would be revolting. Because people would look at ah, ah, from where now? But, but in a democracy, there's that idea that, I mean, that we are complicit in this. Next time, we have to do better. There's that thing. And that is why society can be stable. That's why society can be stable, because there's that idea, there's that community, there's that buy-in of the people, you know, mass generally. And that's why, you know, Larry Diamond is one of the, you know, um, one of the authorities when it comes to political science, and he mentions, you know, the key features of democracy, that one, you have to have free and fair elections, free and fair elections in which people, you know, participate heavily, free and fair elections, number two is the rule of law, that the laws must be clearly defined, number three is the upholding of human rights. That is basically the, now, these thoughts were not thoughts that, um, they were not thoughts that people stumbled on radically. And I'm going into the second part of this, uh, of this now, which is the laws. We look at the evolution of democracy, we want to look at laws, basically, laws. And when I say laws, I'm not about democratic laws, I'm talking basically about laws of life, you know, of laws, you know. You know, you have, uh, you have natural laws, basically, you have natural laws. Um, if, if, I, if I throw this thing up now, everybody knows it's coming down, you know, it's coming down. That's a law, it's the law of gravity. You know, Abby, science, uh, that's the law of gravity, basically, that if you throw, throw it up, it comes down. Now, I mean, if you, if you, um, if you go to UBA, UBA building, and on the 13th floor, I think the highest is 15 or 21, so, if you go to whatever floor, you know, you go to the 20th floor, you put a, a priest, a pastor, you put an imam, you put a dibia there, dibia, a traditional little doctor, you put three of them there, and you tell them three of you, jump, which one of them is going to escape? No, no, man. Which means that basically the law of gravity doesn't care whether you're a pastor, whether you're a dibia, whether you are a, an imam. If you jump from the 20th floor, that's the end. That's the end of that's the end of you, basically. So there's the law of gravity. It's a natural law. It's a law that is that is there. You also have other natural laws. You know, there are, there are some facts that, for instance, you know, this thing will not roll if I roll if I if I if I, if I roll this. If I, if I try to roll this phone on this table now, and if I have a ball, you know which one will roll faster? The ball or the phone? The ball will roll faster because the ball is supposed to roll. So there's actually a law behind it. There's actually a, a, a system by which that ball works. So it will be foolish of me to, to try to roll a ball and a phone and expect the phone to roll as fast as the ball. It's a refusal of me to do that, to have that kind of expectation because they're natural things. And you know, I mean, when I started to, when I really started to, to, to understand that concept was when I had, when I had, when I had my, my baby, my son. I mean, he, he, he was born, started to grow. For a while, you know, everything he, everything he sees, believes, so must go into his mouth. But after a while, after biting on some things that didn't digest, that pain his teeth, he realized that not everything you put inside your mouth, not everything you bite. You can bite this one, it will give you milk. You can bite this one, it will give you pain. So the guy realized, he started to realize it. Another time he would try another, he would try another, he would try another, another, another thing. You know, maybe he tries to stand up, stands up and falls down on the bed, he would laugh. Stand up and fall down on the bed, he would laugh. But then he put him on the floor. Stand up, you fall down, the floor is hard. 
he started to learn, and the people falling on the bed and falling on the floor. That these things are different. Try to understand life. That this thing, you can bite something, it will be soft in your mouth. You can bite something else, it will be hard. Which one is soft? Which one is hard? There are some things that are liquid, there are some things that are solid. If you push the water, the water will pour. But if you push a phone, it just land solidly on the ground. So in looking at it, I realize that we are all like that. We are all like that at some point. Trying to figure out how life works. Trying to figure out how things work. And the luck that we have is now, you know, the, the laws, those are the laws that govern the physical. Which are immutable laws, like I said, you cannot break them. Whether you're a pastor, whether you're an imam, whether you are in Dibia, if you break the law, the law will break you. Basically, you can't break the law. You can't break the law, the law will break you, basically. Now, there are also, um, how do I put them? Emotional laws or laws of laws of life, basically. Um, laws that govern govern life, that govern living. And those are what your religion tries to teach you. Those are those are things that your, your your parents try to teach you. But of course, nobody has a monopoly of those laws because nobody really knows them. You know, so they tell you, okay, you know what? Be kind to people. Be kind to people. You never know who you are going to meet in future, and so on and so forth. People come up with those kind of laws. Those are laws of living. Your parents try to. They come down from a long generation and tell you, you know what? These are things that because of things that your your father has learned. Your father can tell you. Now, for instance, I mean, I was lucky. None of my children has ever played with fire before. Because I was able to tell them and they were able to listen to me. Fire is hot. It's a natural law. You touch it to burn you. If you, are, if you think that you are ice man or whatever, you turn inside fire to burn you. They listen, but I have, I have friends who their children didn't listen to them. You know, and they try to touch the fire, thinking probably that they are ice man. And touch the fire and know that you are not ice man. You are human. And the fire will burn your finger. So those are laws. So the same way your parents to try to teach you about life or life or mentors or people who are older than you try to teach you about life. That you know, in the same way that you are teaching a child about physical laws, you can teach him and say, look, look, they don't do things like this. You don't slap, you don't just raise up your hand and slap somebody who is older than you. It's wrong. You know, you don't do things this way, you don't do things this way. Those are laws of living. Those are the laws of um, in another realm, different from the natural laws. And then you also have you also have laws that govern how we live in society. You know, we have laws that govern how we live in society. Let me tell you, those things are not done. You don't do those kind of things. For instance, you know, as we are here, there's nobody that will, that will be coming here and will be stuck naked. For instance, you know, you don't wear, you don't wear your shirt, you don't wear anything, you come in. I mean, somebody comes in here now and strolls into this place. You know, just strolls and the man is naked from head to toe. You don't know what's wrong. Yeah? I mean, all of us will run, won't we? Because the guy is, I mean, you think this guy is mad. There are some things you don't do in society. Those are the laws of society. If you break, if that guy does that thing, after we all run, when we see that there's no way for us to run, we will say, look, let's hold this guy, you, hold his leg, let me hold his hand, let's tie him, tie him first of all, and put him in one corner, before you start asking him, okay, what happened? There's nothing now, I'm okay. I just said, no, you are not okay. If you are okay, you will not, you will not. No, so you see, he has broken a law. Because the law is that now there's nobody that sat anywhere and says that if you are going for uh, the legacy discussion forum, you must wear clothes. You know, nobody told you that. But everybody that said it's commonsensical. In the same way, you know, if somebody just runs from the back now, you know, you know, Kabasa just runs from the back and stands on this table and starts saying, hey, you know what's going on? What's going on? Are you are you okay? Because you'll be breaking a law. Now it's not as if when you came in, somebody wrote a law and said don't run and jump and stand on the table. It's just commonsensical laws that basically help society to live. You see somebody, you shake the person, you say, how are you? Nice to meet you. If somebody breaks that law, you wonder what's wrong with the person, you stretch your hand to shake the person, the person says, you wonder, ah, do I know him from somewhere? Ah, sir, what's wrong with your girlfriend? You call your girlfriend, they're sorry, am I your side nigga? Maybe you have, maybe that's your real boyfriend and the guy knows me, and I don't know, and that's why the guy is refusing to shake my hand. But they're basically laws like that. And when you break those laws, you can't break those laws technically, those laws, um, you, 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 but you can't break those laws basically, but you can break yourself on those laws. You can break yourself on those laws. So those are basically the laws that govern. In the same way, there are also laws that govern how a country should be administered. And when a country breaks those laws, you can now start wondering, why are things not working for me, for us as a country? You understand the point now? You cannot say that you are a democracy, but you are preaching the basic laws of democracy and you are expecting the results of democracy. It will simply not work. 
The laws that govern democracy say that this is how democracy must work. This is how you must practice democracy in order for democracy to deliver results for you as a country. Now, you have not practiced that democracy in the way that democracy should be practiced, but you are expecting the results of democracy. It cannot work because you are basically breaking the law and expecting that things will work the way it's supposed to work. And that's why I've taken you through this idea of how democracy evolved, how people looked at society and said, monarchy is not working, we've tried it. Oligarchy is not working, we've tried it. Aristocracy, you know, all these things are not working. Democracy is what we need to have. But democracy will not work for you if you are practicing democracy as if you are practicing oligarchy. If you are practicing democracy as if you are practicing an aristocracy, it will simply not deliver results for you. And I mentioned you know, from Larry Diamond, the four, um, the four elements of the three, or four elements that Larry Diamond actually lists for, but you know, I like to think of them as three, because one of them is intertwined. It separates, it separates um, participatory um, citizenship, you know, where people participate heavily, um, from free and fair elections, but I like to lump them together as one. Free and fair elections is an opportunity for people to participate, so that's one. That's, that's, that's one. And then, you know, you have the rule of law. And you have, now, you are breaching the law, of, you are breaching the rule of law. You are changing the rules as you want. And you say you want democracy to work for you. It is not simply going to work for you. So basically, that is the idea. That democracy evolved as the best form of government because it guarantees the buying of the highest number of people and is more representative than any other government. And when you have the buying of the people, like I said in the words of Nicolo, uh, Nicolo Machiavelli, that you know, you ensure that many people upon the are in the long run, um, um, less painful to them than that's inflicted upon them by others. So, because you have that buying of the people into that system, that is how democracy can eventually work for you. But the law is that. You have to do it the way it is said to be done in order for you to get the result said to, 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 um, to, to be. I mean, you can use the phone as an example. So, you have a phone, you know, and all of a sudden you buy a phone, you buy a new phone, they tell you charges, you don't read the manual, you don't do anything. But you simply just take the phone and you're trying to switch it on. You know, some phones might work, some phones might not, might not work. But and then you start telling them, eh, see Samsung, phone? I bought phone from you people, it's not coming on. They tell you, madam, uh, madam, calm down. No, 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 you, you are this, you are that. I tell you, madam, did you charge it? He said, no. He said, but the, the, the iPhone I bought before, I didn't need to charge it. I just you know, started using it immediately. But he told you, no, you have to consult the manual. What is happening with Nigeria basically is that Nigeria is practicing democracy only in the rest of practicing democracy in truth. If not, we would have witnessed development at a far greater rate than what we have seen so far. Ordinarily, when you're practicing democracy, because the highest form of power in Nigeria today, the highest, form of, the highest form of power in democracy is people power. Now, if you have people power that is solid, if, you, if, if leaders know that their being in office is dependent on the voters, then they will do everything that they can do to satisfy the voters. But because in Nigeria today, people who are in office, they owe their allegiance to whether the military who brought them in or one godfather somewhere, that's not democracy, because the people are not the highest power. Like I said in the beginning, democracy is from two words, the demo and kratia, which is the rule of the people. People, the people are not ruling in Nigeria today. If not, your local government chairman should have your phone number, ordinarily, because he knows that your vote counts. So he will probably call you maybe once in four years, just tell you that everything is fine, everything is okay. Because he knows that your vote counts. I mean, that's what happens. Your counselor, maybe, maybe not your local government chairman, but your counselor maybe, will have your phone number. Because your counselor, I mean, you are governing, you are, 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 you know, maybe most counselors, 250,000 people, you know. But they have streets, they have problems. But because the guy doesn't owe you as the voter, he knows that it's not your vote that brought him there. He doesn't feel any need for him to, fix your road, or to do things that will please you because not really your vote that brought him in. He knows that it's Rumba somewhere that probably said, this is going to be your next other government chairman, and you know that that's what's going to happen. That's why your governor, for instance, can wake up and say, look, Okada, I don't like, Keke, I don't like, banned. Because it is not your vote, per se, that brought him in. He knows that it's one person that looked at him, that looked at the incumbent governor and said, look, you are not going for a second time, go and pick that other guy, let him come and become governor. And that's how they brought him and brought him in and made him governor. So, it's not democratic. If it was democratic, it would lead to development. The evolution of democracy confirms that every other form of government has been tried and found to have flaws. 
it is not that democracy is the most perfect system of government. No, it is simply the idea of now we take our hand, do ourselves in democracy. That you know you're a part of the decision making process. If we all agree, for instance, to go downstairs and come up, then let's, this is the second floor, let's all run downstairs and come up with speed. Let's do it how many times? We all say five times. Somebody says, no, I don't want five, but let's do only four. Somebody says, no, let's do ten. Somebody says, let's do, and we all agree, and we say, okay, seven. Everybody says, seven, seven, yes, everybody agree, yes. You know, when we started going up and down, even you that you are tired, you will be able to complain. Because when you say seven, you say yes. So it is not that democracy is the best because of that, but because it gives you room to express your choice. So when we do the seven and we come back upstairs and everybody now sits down, we are all breathing hard. Somebody comes up and says, let's do another seven. By that time, you know that it's a game of majority. We are talking to people. Tell that guy, we are not doing any seven. We are not even going anywhere. We want to rest and do everything. And you work with people to achieve majorities. Make sure that your own voice prevails. So when, it's, when the guy says, let's do seven, you say, no, we are not doing seven. Let's rest for two hours first. If you want to do seven, you go on your own. So, the majority will have their way, but the minority will have their say. And if the minority are able to maneuver, then they can ensure that their voice becomes stronger, you know, that, they, that their thoughts become that of the majority and it carries the day at the end of the day. But when you do not now involve people in the decision making process, and you now expect the buying of people, it is where the problem comes. It is why the system will not work. And it is, you know, the expression of the old thing is that the law of democracy is being breached in Nigeria presently. And because that law is being breached, that's why democracy is not delivering for Nigerians. Unless Nigeria can, can revert to that, uh, to that, to the, to the proper tenets of democracy, to the proper idea, to the founding thoughts that guided those who brought democracy up, um, up as, 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 as the best form of government. Unless you, you return to that particular point, you will always continue to go around in circles because the law of democracy is being breached. And, um, and, and as long as the law of democracy is being breached, you will continue to have a democracy that does not work for you, basically. So um, that, that's, that's basically the end. That's the end of it. Can we put our hands together? Without, uh, without Yes, but almost one hour. So what? No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. That, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So, so um, I said we're going to leave the last thirty minutes for questions. I think we have only 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes now. Because so I don't want, I don't want to extend beyond 1 p.m. for the sake of people who. Okay. So basically, I have two questions. So, on the first topic that you talked about democracy. So my question is, since 1999 till date. Yes. Why is it that our democracy has not really evolved? Is it because of our, of our diversity? Or is it because of the operators? That's the first question. Is it our diversity? Because if you look at other crimes, it seems that they form the kind of um, system of government that suits, that suits their country. And probably it's working for them. So that's my question is, is it because of our operator or is it because of our diversity? No, but I think I explained that basically Nigeria is not practicing democracy. The democracy is not working in Nigeria because Nigeria is not practicing democracy. Nigeria is basically, you are doing everything but democracy. I mean, your elections don't count. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's like the most basic thing about the democracy. The votes must be the supreme authority that brings anybody into office. And it is only when the votes are the supreme authority that bring people into office that people can deliver whatever you think is the dividends of democracy. So wherever you are having a short change, when you are not abiding by the law of democracy, which is the most basic law of democracy that votes must count, people must, I mean, you had, you had, you had times in the ancient Greek kingdom where, even in the US, and okay, maybe I shouldn't, Maybe I should let you finish so that I can, I can take it. I can take it all at once. But I don't want it to, to, to break that down. You are entering into the second question. Yeah. So if you notice from 1999 to date, voter participation has been very, very poor. In the 2019 election, we had about 34% of voter turnout. So we have about 72 people that are collected, 72.7 .7 million that are collected with PVCs. And these are people that were eligible to vote. And at the end of the day, we only had about 28 million people that voted. So, 
Is it that we are party in voting? Is it because votes don't count? Or is it because people just decide not to vote? Or is it that they don't know what their votes could actually do? Or is it because it doesn't count? Which, which, which of which? Because in Lagos, for instance, less than a million people voted in Lagos. And Lagos had the highest number of PPCs collected. In a, party, in, a, in a political party's primary, a million people voted for their candidates. So it was very funny when I, when I looked at it. A million people voted for their governor in their party primary in Lagos State, but less than a million people voted <laughs> in the general election in Lagos. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So the next question, so that we can take everything at once, but. Um, Let's try and keep it short, yes, please. Let's keep it short so that we can. My name is Patrick. I, when I was coming here, I was listening to Brian Moore, Grandpa. That's the title of that uh, song. So I was listening because I want to put myself in the frame of mind for this discussion. And uh, I realized that one of the things that he said that about his grandpa, the metaphorical grandpa, is that he's 100 years old. And the guy is not, he's not done anything. He has everything that he needs to have as a man to take care of his family, but he's not doing it. So I, I kept listening to that music all the way here, and I think we should listen to it too. Why I brought in that uh, is because why are we here? I was asking myself, why am I coming for this legacy discussion? Why are we here? Are we holding talks like uh, Olaro to me would say? Why are we here? I think that this, the purpose for our gathering here should be narrowed down and explained to us, if we don't know already, so that when we leave this place, we would be energized, we would be empowered to think differently. Because from thinking differently, we will act differently, such that maybe in five years, in four years, in 2023, we may start to have a semblance of democracy we may start to begin to participate in the democratic process. So that is really my question. So why are we here? Thank you. My name is Yemi. Uh, I have just two questions. It's, it's similar to what people have been asking. Number one, uh, we've been talking about democracy. Nigeria has been doing democracy since 99. We've tried it before and all of that. And um, now I'm wondering, you know, some people have brought up the idea that maybe the democracy we have is not a good fit for Nigeria. Maybe the kind of democracy. So, you know, my question is that, do you think that we need a special, different, customized kind of democracy that is set up in a different way from the UK or the US style, you know, democracy that would work for Nigeria? Is it, do, do you think that is an idea that really works? Do you think we need to start looking for a different format that is totally different from what the rest of the world is doing. Maybe we are, <laughs> maybe maybe our composition and our, is totally yeah, different, and it, it requires a, a totally different, a, a different kind of thing. You know, yes. maybe that maybe, you know. So do we do we need to start thinking about that? Is it is it necessary or is it that we are just doing it? We are just taking it, th doing it the wrong, taking the right thing okay. and doing it the wrong way. Okay. And the second question is that you know you also mentioned about voter party, but I'm talking about a party general apathy to the democratic process. I think Nigerians so far, you know, I know that it has not worked. So maybe people feel, why, what's the point? Because it has not worked. So now, how do we bring people to participate? Because the solution, if, we, if democracy, if we are going to do democracy, then people have to participate. Sure. By voting, by putting themselves over power forward for elected positions, by getting into, you know, by getting participating. So the point is that, if people don't participate in democracy, democracy is not going to work in Nigeria. That's, that's the fact. So how do we start to bring people to come into participation, general participation in the democratic process more? What are the things that, um, how do we make it possible? I don't know. It's just, I think that's a kind of, I don't know, it's a question of rhetoric or something. But it's a general question that how can we ensure that people start to get more involved in democracy? Because if they don't get involved, it's not going to work. So it doesn't have to be My name is Hussein. Surprisingly, it's similar to this. But it's put like this from what you said. 
the evolution showed that for it to work, everybody or the society had to agree. Do you think that Nigeria is breaking or disobeying the democratic tenets because this democracy was chosen or given to us, not necessarily because we chose it? So the real question would be, why is Nigeria disobeying the tenet of democracy? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Obinna. So basically my, my, my question is both a question and a statement also. I think that democracy is flawed first of all. So he gave an example of people going, everyone going downstairs and coming up and everyone agreeing about seven times going up and coming down. But the truth is, in democracy, everybody doesn't agree. So let's take for example the last election we had in Nigeria. We had, I think slightly, 50-something um, percent of the voters voting for Buhari and the rest voting for Atiku or something like that. So that's a significant portion of the population refusing to vote for Buhari. So why do they have to live under Buhari and his, rule, his rules, his laws, his dictates and stuff like that? If you go to America, the same thing. A significant proportion of Americans voted for Clinton, Hillary, but they are living under um, Trump. So. I feel like democracy doesn't carry everybody along, it just carries the majority. And the majority might be wrong. The majority, the majority might just be very slim majority, but they are the majority and they have to have their way. And the rest just have to suck it up and you know live with whatever it is that and call it democracy. I don't think I don't I think there should be a way to like structure democracy in a way that it also works for the people who don't want that kind of leader, you know, that's just what I feel. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's have a Yeah, my name is Kende. I would like to get your thoughts on our political orientation and our electoral process. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm Joseph. Uh, I think this discussion is, um, out and um, as a Nigerian, I can hear from all of us we are really concerned about our country. Why is it not working? And that is still the same line where I want to uh, ask my question, where my concern is based. If you look at Nigeria critically, you will discover that even before independence, Nigeria has not really agreed on on anything. Even our leaders, there's always been disagreement, and at the end of the day, we just come up with something, and they're doing it, but they've never agreed. And down to today, that uh, uh, every section, let's let's look at it from when they started from regions. Every region has, has always been how it's going to benefit us. They've never seen it like how is it going to benefit every region. How is it going to be only our, our region? That's how it has been to today. And that is the reason why protests or agitation has never succeeded in Nigeria. Because by the time a person is wrong and others want to crucify that person, the people from that region will, will be like, your own person has done this before. You didn't crucify him. Why must you crucify this one? So, uh, and I think that is, uh, 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 one of the reasons why Nigerians don't really participate in elections like we are complaining now because they feel like it is not a Nigerian, it is not something that is not going to be all of us. So my question now is this, if Nigeria, okay, before I ask the question, let me come to this um, uh, uh, thought. I feel personally that even if you bring an angel, a superhuman, to come and govern Nigeria in this same form, Nigeria will not, will not work. There's something we are missing. This government we are practicing, this style of government, this structure of government we are practicing, is not something that is homegrown. It is not from us. We just imbibe it and we want to make it work. What do we think can actually work for us? Not as a country now, as a people, so that everybody can have good life, irrespective of who you are or where you are from. What, what do you think can work for people, not Nigeria now? 
we'll just take those two small ones. Let's keep it short so that we'll have time to answer. I don't want us to do the old ones, but of course, who may might have other programs and so on. And if we, if we were not able to start any because of classes on our part, and possibly coming along, we'll keep it short. Uh, my name is Muyua. Um, my question is, what is the place of finance in representation? We keep saying democracy has failed or it's not working, but what exactly is the place of finance? Because from all practical examples or experience, finance is actually a, a major directional force in democracy. Thank you. My question is on the issue of restructuring. It means different things to different people, especially in Nigeria. And we've heard a lot of people talking about it. But what is the direction we are supposed to go on that? On, um, on, on democracy. And I felt, and this is something that will be ongoing, you know. And I felt that this is a very good place to start because we need to understand how democracy evolved. Um, like Obina raised, and then like I think you also raised, that is the problem with democracy probably because why is it not working in Nigeria? And that's what I've explained. See, if something is not working, it's because you are not working it correctly. Simple. If it is not working, it's because you are not obeying the laws of it. Nigeria is not obeying the laws of democracy. And Nigeria is expecting democracy to work. And that was why after I had that topic, the evolution of democracy, I had to put and laws. It wasn't just the laws of democracy, it was, was the idea of how laws work. You cannot, see, you can jump from a story building five times. You will fall five times and you will buy five times. <laughs> if, 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 you know, just say, you know. You are not, until you obey the laws that govern a thing, you will continue to grapple with that thing. The reason Nigeria is, I mean, all the questions you've asked, everything that everybody has asked, is basically coming back to that thing. It is not Niger because Nigeria is special, or because Nigeria needs one kind of specially poor solution. I'm giving you examples from Greece, giving you examples from England, giving you examples from America. These countries had problems that were as real, or even worse than our own problems. The fact that America is where it is today, people are just seeing some of the cracks that democracy has sustained over the years for America. America went to war. I mean, and we'll come to that probably in subsequent meetings. America went to war, serious war, over issues of slavery. They had this same North and South divide. It was almost worse than it was, than it was in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, the South pulled out at the point and said, look, you still see America, we are not part of it anymore with you. Go and between America by yourself. We, we are no longer United States of America. We are um, Confederation States of America. We are CSA. And they were doing elections at that point. And Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln won there. In fact, when they swore Abraham Lincoln in, there was two Americas at that time. Some had said that they were not going. But they were able to pay power over it because they had a system of government that was stable. And that system of government was basically that look. Once somebody is voted for and declared the winner, doesn't matter whether it's everybody. In fact, when they started democracy in America, you know slaves could not vote. Sure. You know blacks could not vote. Women. Women could not vote at that time. You, the age was 21. So the people who could vote were very, very few compared to the number of society. But democracy is the only system where nothing is permanent. Where, where, where everybody can have a voice. Because truth is this. You cannot have, like, and that was why I started from the, what's it called now? The evolution of society, basically. That you can decide to be on your own in that state of nature, where you are your own king, you are your own lord. You can decide what time you want to wake up, you can decide. But from the moment man started coming into society, you have to give up some rights. You cannot be having it your way all the time. So all you need to look for is what the majority wants. Because that's the only way to be fair. If, for instance, I'm the one who tells you everybody, because you can compare it and say, okay, we all agree, or majority agree, let's go upstairs and let's go downstairs. You know which one will be the most fair? Which one will be the fairest? If I say everybody, you know what, let's all run downstairs seven times and come back upstairs. Or if I throw it open. If you throw it open, we'll be the one that is fairer. Because you can have a situation where one person, who is the king, and that's why I pointed out that those systems have been tried before. You've had the monarchy, 
where people thought, oh, this guy is so brilliant, he's the best guy, he's the best everything, he's the, he's the one that can do this thing and everything. And then they gave the guy power. And the guy suddenly took your wife. And you're wondering, ah, why did this guy take my wife? And the guy tells you, because I need to keep her and take her away from you because the gods have divine it. And people say, okay, okay. But then he's taking everybody's way. And somebody looks at it, ah, is this guy mad? What, where is he written that the king can take anybody's wife and make her his wife? And people started to challenge that. So it was the flaws in the monarchy, the monarchical system. That was why people evolved away from monarchy. And I just then they now moved to oligarchy and said, okay, instead of having one guy, let's have a few guys. But then they discovered that a few guys cannot be deciding for us. So if you look at all the forms of government, you will discover that democracy is the best, not because it is the best as a job, but because it gives you a sense of participation. And then it tells you that next time, if you don't want to run downstairs and come upstairs several times, go and talk to people and get more people to be on your side. So that when they say, should we run downstairs several times, people will say no. And because one person cannot beat everybody, you know, it essentially becomes that. So the reason why democracy has not worked in Nigeria, which is why we are explaining, which is the point of this entire thing, is that Nigeria is not obeying the laws that govern democracy. If you obey the laws that govern democracy, and the, 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 the solid example is America. I mean, um, maybe, 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 you know, maybe next month when we, when we, when we, when we gather again, we'll, we'll go into that. But you know, the origins of America, I mean, once you had those guys, those guys signed everything, and then you had the first president, you had the second president, you had the third president. You know, by the time we get into the third president, those guys were all federalists. They all generally like federalists. And the federalists, in fact, for like two or three years, they didn't have a president because of like the first from 1776. Because they were thinking, they were thinking, some people were saying that, look, no, 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 we want to stand on our own. We don't want to, I mean, why should I submit to some guy who's who living in Washington and with called up as the capital, you know, Virginia at that time? Why is that? The guy will be telling me what to do in my own place. States were saying, I mean, their own divisions were much like the Igbo Yoruba, the Hausa differences. States were saying, no, 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 we are not signing this law. You see this clause that everybody must bring tobacco, must bring their tobacco to the, to the capital or must pay so, so It doesn't work for me. I don't want it. Take your thing and go. If people say you don't want, I'm not part of the America, you should between America. I mean, I'll call myself a single country by our own self. You had those divisions. They couldn't even agree on the constitution. They had to start breaking that there was, there was negotiation. In fact, they were a confederal system where the center was weaker than the component states for a very long time. People now started saying, let us all join together and let us be it. And then they joined together. That's how the federalists were able to unite the country. So I'm going to start looking at them and saying, ah, but this federalist self, then too, it's not as if they have too much sense. Let us go and form ourselves. The Democrats and Republicans were one party initially. It was one party. They called it the Democrats Republican Party against the Federalist Party. So they were one party and say, later today you look at it and say, you know what? These guys that call themselves, these guys that come with Republican ideas, they are not so smart. Let us do it. For they now split. The Federalist Party went down. But they agreed. They now split. But they agreed on what? All these people that you are mentioning, yes. the difference is that these people agreed at the end of the day to come together and no, what I'm saying is this, they agreed because there was that, that, that crucial thing put inside, which was democracy. That no matter what happens, whether you disagree or not, we will always go with the majority opinion. Right. You understand what I'm saying? We we'll always go with the majority opinion. Now, it's like, it's like um, we have not agreed because, no, no, we have not agreed on what exactly. We have not agreed on coming together. No, 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 that's what I'm saying because you have not agreed on democracy itself as a principle. The, the reason why it was agreed, because democracy is not working in your country. That's what I'm saying. The problem is not the problem is not in the principle. Now the problem is in the application. It's in the way Nigeria is applying it. Nigeria, one, your country has not practiced democracy for a reasonable period, and even since '99, you have not really practiced democracy as you should be. You can you can list on your fingers the. Um, the elections that were really free and fair. See, since 1999, if you had practiced democracy, I'm telling you that by now, your counselors will be visiting your door and saying, look, I'm sorry, I heard that your car ran into a portal, and because your car ran into a portal, I heard that it damaged it. We are still going to fix it, because he knows that your vote is important. The reason why it is not working is because it doesn't owe you that loyalty. So the ground norm of it, the basis of it is that democracy merely guarantees increased participation, but it only works. The law of democracy, the most, the most basic law of democracy is that that must be king, the voter must be king. But because the voter is not king in Nigeria, that is why things are going the way, the way it is. 
Nigeria is not special. There's nothing special about Nigeria. If you look at almost every country, people have fought wars. People have, people have fought bloody wars. England, you know, they, was, they were divided. France, divided. People were going, people were going, people were writing story upon story the same way some of you will write story upon story on Twitter and Facebook. They are writing, people were writing story, no, decide I should do it, decide I should do it. But until you had that basic idea of democracy coming in, it was, that was when, you know, things were able to move forward. So, basically, voter participation is poor in Nigeria because votes don't count. Your votes simply do not count in Nigeria. And it doesn't count because leaders have, people want to practice monarchy and call it a democracy. People want to practice aristocracy and call it a, a, a democracy. People want to practice oligarchy and call it a democracy. But until you are practicing that democracy, you know, you cannot have, you cannot have, you cannot have that. So I don't think we need a special kind of democracy. What we need is real democracy in Nigeria. We don't need, we don't need, we don't need a special form of government. What we need to practice, we haven't practiced the one we are practicing, we haven't followed it the way it should be followed. When you follow it the way it should be followed, you will get the results that it says you should get. And that's the importance of the laws that I mentioned. If you do things the way the law says you should do it, then you will get the results that it says you should get it. So if you are nice to people, you expect people to be nice to you back. You know, people are coming up with these um, metaphysical laws that are known as spiritual laws anyway. But about metaphysical laws, the law of attraction, that the things you think about constantly, the like kind of things you, you attract to yourself. I mean, of course, nobody can go and test it. But people believe in those things because people can see the results. So if you can see the results, you follow those laws. They say, oh, if you give somebody money, somebody else will give you money by evening. You know, people practice those things and try to see whether those things work. But those laws, those laws are imprecise. You cannot really substantiate them, you cannot really. But the laws of physicality, that if you jump from somewhere, you knock your head, problem. You jump, law of gravity doesn't care. And of course, if you are going to break the law, now this is where the genius of democracy is. If you are going to break a law of democracy, if you are going to break a law of democracy, basically, you have to be coming from a superior point of point of um, of, of engagement with it. Now, America can break certain laws, like you pointed out. The rules are there. That okay, you have to win. I mean, the same thing happened to it, it happened to to this guy. He, he was in the fifth or sixth. Andrew Jackson in 1824. Andrew Jackson won the popular vote, but the House of Representatives was supposed to be um, the Electoral College at that time. So the election, he won the popular vote, but he didn't win by enough majority to guarantee him. So they have to take it to the Electoral College. The Electoral College was the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives voted, and they voted for the guy who got less votes. Because the guy who got less votes was John Adams. And John Adams was a, was a bad guy, basically. John Adams had reached a deal with the Speaker of the House of Representatives, who was a guy called Clay. He had gone to Speaker and said, Speaker, if you um, deliver the Electoral College votes to me, I will make you Secretary of State. And the guy delivered the House of Representatives votes to him. And some days after, someone became president and um, he invited the speaker to come and become Secretary of State. And Andrew Jackson in 2024, that was how Andrew Jackson lost. And Andrew Jackson was not an easy man. He was a, and and I guess he was even, he was, he was a moralist, you know, but he was somebody who could bring out his gun and shoot anybody. This was ancient America. If you insult his wife, he will tell you, meet him by 12, 12 noon tomorrow, we are going to put you in jail. If you die, you die. If I die, I die. The guy was always doing it all over the place. You bring out one and shoot. In fact, when they when they met at the at the presidential dinner, the whole room went quiet. Everybody was wondering, will and actually just shoot this guy because he was really pissed. I mean, he won the election. He won the popular vote, but because of the electoral college, because he, he didn't go to the speaker to go and say, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. But this other guy went there and said, I'll give you this, I'll give you. And this other guy, his father had been president before. It was there was a first John, uh, John Quincy Adams and second John Adams. So he felt that, and he was a soldier. So he felt that they were using their aristocratic powers to oppress him. So when he came into the, you know, the presidential inauguration, people were all looking at him that this guy, he might bring out the gun, and but he simply walked up to him, he shook his hand, and he came back and contested in 1828. And when he came back and contested in 1828, he won. You know, he didn't even need to go to the electoral college. He won. And, and in fact, today there is something known as the Jacksonian democracy. Because he was one who now brought democracy down to the grassroots, to the people, basically, that let everybody, if you Google it, you see Jacksonian democracy. Everybody, you know, started to participate more in democracy because he believed so much in people power. When John Adams was in the White House and they were thinking, oh, we don't need to campaign, we don't campaign in democracy, we are most always win. This guy was busting his, was busting his neck, you know, and, and saying that he was going to, 
and you know, campaigning all over the place, taking pictures and doing everything. And you know, they spent, in fact, they insulted his wife. People thought he was doing sugar. He didn't, you know, he had learned to be calm. So basically, no, but, but the thing is this the reason why it is acceptable to you, like I said, is what Nicola Machiavelli said, which is that the injuries that men inflict upon themselves are in the long run less painful to them than that which is inflicted upon them by others. It's like you know the rules. The rules say that you might win the highest number of votes, but because you haven't met this qualification, the electoral college. Now, we can now go back, the beauty of democracy is that we can now go back and rewrite those rules. But of course, it will appear selfish. But you can go back and rewrite those rules that, no, let's not have it like that. It's not democratic enough. It is that democracy, I mean, America, they wrote a constitution. The constitution has gone through how many amendments now? I think about, about 25 or so. Amendments, they have amended several parts of it. You can do that. It gives you the opportunity to rewrite it. For if it was one man who made the rule for himself, for himself and his family, they will continue following that rule, and there is nothing that anybody can do can do about it. How do we be able to participate in the democracy? Simple. Follow the laws of democracy. The laws of democracy guarantee that when people know that their votes count, people will come out and participate more. 2015 was the way it went because people felt that their votes counted in 2011 and then they came out in 2015. But after a while, we started hearing about elections, you know, happy, meetings all over the place that, you know, people were, were doing that. There will be a decline, naturally. In a situation where you have people, where you have government, um, Deliberately, I mean, look at what happened in Lagos State. You know, you had, you had, you had, you had, you had, you had, you had people being targeted in specific areas. You know, that would be my, my area. I was in Lagos State. I was, I was, I was in Abuja for that during that election. But I came back from the Nigeria, and you know, I mean, they had people attacking people, you know, on the basis of their votes because they felt that it was who they were going to vote for. You don't do those kind of things and then start asking why I'm going to vote in democracy because you, I, you, I might die because I want to vote. I might die. So I mean, you are breaking the law. You have to protect voters. If you, are, you can't be breaking the law and be asking what's going on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you, cannot be, you cannot be kicking your leg on this thing repeatedly. And now they ask, why is my leg pain? I don't know why my leg is pain in me. Then you go back and kick it again. I don't know why my leg is pain in me. I don't know. My leg is just pain in me. You kick it again. Somebody will tell you, oh, guys, you are mad. Because you are, I mean, this is what you are doing wrong. You are doing something wrong and you are expecting it to work right. You know what I'm saying? We are getting democracy wrong. That is the basis of this. That let us have leaders who come with you and understand the basis of democracy. That when you work this thing correctly, you will get the result it says you will get. And I'll give you so many examples. I'll give you the example of four. You can buy stacks. The other time I bought stacks, and I was thinking stacks is not working, it's not working, it's not working. But I, all I had to do was to read the label and understand. Until I got somebody who understood and said, no, you have to soak it for, for this time to dissolve. You have to use a bit of warm water to mix it, and then you can that when it will now work for you. But you cannot, you cannot be breaking a law and be wondering what the judge is doing basically is that we are breaking the laws of democracy. In fact, I'm not even sure which ones we are upholding in spirit and in truth, like in, in, in deed. Of course, you have, a, you have a semblance of it, you have an INEC, but we all know the process where, you know, by which, you know, those ones are chosen. And you won't say, well, you might be lucky to get somebody who is free and fair, because the person has a, um, um, a, a track record of being free and fair, you know, I mean, if you appoint to if you appoint to the, you know, because, because they have that track record of being free and fair, they get the, there's credibility in the process. But when you have a situation where your INEC chairman cannot even come out and affirm his commitment to democracy on TV, you yeah, have a problem. When your INEC chairman does not understand the basic connection between the vote of people, and good governance. When you don't understand the fact that a governor, for instance, like your hope on Dima in Nemo State, or, or you know, anybody else, will not feel a sense of um, 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 loyalty to the people because he didn't come into power directly based on them. See, if Nigeria had practiced democracy from 1999, true democracy from 1999, Nigeria would have gone far by now. Because you see, when you have true democracy, three things happen. Number one, you have, you have a, 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 a government, you have governments at all levels that understand that they owe they are being in office to the people. That's number one, and I'll explain that for some go over that. Number two is that you have more people participating in the system in terms of votes. But number three, which is the most crucial, is that you have more right-headed thinking people contesting for offices because they have confidence in the system. So you can look at your governor and say, look, I can defeat this governor guy. Why? Because you know that the entire is free and fair. So you have people coming back from Nigeria 
believing that look, I can defeat this guy. She means to campaign. I will campaign. Is it to spend money? I will spend money. Whatever it is, I will come in and do it. But when you know that this thing is rigged against you, you know that there is no way, even if you campaign, you do anything, even if you, even if the whole of Lagos is supporting you, but so long one man, one man is not supporting you, you know that you never become the government. You won't bother to come home. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, we would have had people who have been having the increasingly best people living in, in government. I mean, in my estate, where I live, um, the neighbor who lives, who lives, lives under me, we talk a lot. And I know that Chuno, and he has been in the estate for longer than I have. And I know that Chuno, this man is a good man, he has, you know, what it takes. And some guy was running the estate and was, you know, just jumping everywhere and he was always doing stuff and showing himself and everything. And some was, you know, I mean, one of us was going and come out and just leaving to do his thing. But after he was there, he said, look, 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 Baba, why don't you run for? Me and you are talking, I know that you know this thing. Let's do it. We know how we do it. We did it. And we did it. We campaigned. We did everything. The guy who come out the first time, well, we didn't get enough votes, you know. I was in around, things just happened. He lost. Second time, and the man is there now, and everything is going. There's better electricity, there's better everything, everything is just better. You are saying, ah, where have you been since? The reason why he could come out, apart from knowing that he was better than that guy, was that he knows that if I campaign well, and I get more votes than this other guy, he got the 10 votes, the other guy got maybe like 10. And I can be better than this incumbent chairman, I will defeat him. That was why we were able to bring a good man into the race. Now, things that used to look like rocket science, where the estate executive on the Monday morning, all of them will wake up and go and stand at the gate of the estate, put a table there, and be saying, Yes, we'll stop you. Yes, what's your name? Which flat? Okay, you have not paid dues. Close the gates, close the gates, you have not paid dues. And predicting something. This new chairman now is still at the whole thing where people are paying into account. We don't, people don't even see him at the gate. I mean, is it possible for you to be paying into accounts without you dragging them? This guy thought he was rocket science. But now he's showing them that, look, you can do these things and it is easy. But the only reason he could emerge was because there was a democratic system in place. Now, somebody else is looking at this guy, who we are thinking is the best. Looking at him and thinking, ah, people are still doing this, I can do better than this guy. I can do better than this, I can do better than this guy. I want to contest. What will give him confidence to contest is because he knows that there's a chance he can win. By not allowing democracy to, 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 to succeed in Nigeria, we are shortchanging ourselves by not allowing the best material to come out. Only people who, who know that they can gain the system are the ones who are coming out. The better guys are not coming out. They prefer to go elsewhere, they prefer to go and express themselves in music. First people express themselves in business, first people express themselves abroad, set up businesses and use their talents in other areas because the system is rigged against them. So Nigeria is changing itself by not practicing democracy the way democracy should be practiced. I'm trying to you who are in the minority. But in Nigeria, you have to reverse. Once you lose, once you're part of the losing side, they start to say, oh, they put all their eggs in one basket, and so they are not going to be a part of the, they are not going to be um, to be a part of the government. Mm -hmm. because, because, like I said, and to really understand these things, you know, you would, you would have to go and study and study and study. I've, I've, just, I've just, you know, brought up all the various ideas. Like I said, the age of enlightenment was really the age that brought about the democracy that America had. Now you had people like, like John Locke, who came up with the idea of social contracts. That governments don't just exist. Governments exist for a reason. And they trace the history of society that the reason why I agree to be a part of this society is because I feel this society can do some things for me. And because society can do things for me, I am willing to give up a few of my rights to be a part of this society because I, I, I perceive that the benefit I will get from this society is more than these my rights that it will take away from me. So you will sacrifice, for instance, a right to be, I mean, if I come into your house, and I always like to use that example, if I come into your house, this is not how you're going to be dressed in your house. Abi, you probably be wearing your boxers. That's how you sleep naked, stuck naked. I don't know how people do it. I always wear trousers, you know, trousers at my house, you don't understand, but, but I mean, some people sleep stuck naked, full grown men, you, because you're in your house. You understand what I'm saying? But when you decide to be a part of society, you sacrifice things like your right to, to be walking all over the place naked that let me be a part of society, I want to be sane. So you sacrifice that. But there must now also be something that you are getting from that government, which is what is missing in times like this. 
the idea of social contract. You also had ideas like that of John Stuart Mill, who wrote, he wrote, I mean, these men were, and these men, and see, it's one of the things that I, that I always, you know, like, you can imagine my son now, coming to me and saying, maybe when he was growing up, he says, we tell him, this is food, you eat it, you eat food. Now, he eats food, he eats food, he eats food. One day he comes and says, Daddy, I don't feel like eating food again. I say, what do you mean? I don't feel like eating any kind of food. Say, you don't feel like eating indomie? You don't feel like eating uh, this? You don't feel like eating yam? You don't feel like eating? No, all those things I want to eat. What do I want to eat? Paper and glass. <laughs> and you look at him, paper and glass. How, what do you mean? Say, look. And he turns to the paper and starts eating it. He starts eating paper. And he starts eating glass. You know how time you say that this person has, that this child is a very, is a very special, it's a very special one. But you know that if you leave that child alone for long enough, something will go wrong in the system. You understand? Something will go wrong in the system. What we are doing in Nigeria is that people have studied for years. And that's why I chased it from the beginning. People have studied for years and seen that some things don't work. Now, Nigeria now gets to say, actually, Indomie, we are not eating. This, we are not eating. Amala, we are not eating. Uh, Afan, we are not eating. To wash in Kafa, we are not eating. We are not eating all this food. We want to be eating paper and glass. You will have the problems you are having. You have stomach indigestion. Your system will revolve. You have internal bleeding. You will look emaciated. That is what Nigeria is doing. Nigeria is breaking the law because there's a law that governs what you can eat and what you cannot eat. Do you understand? So when you break the law that governs what you can eat and you now start eating what you are not supposed to eat, you will receive the consequences. Nigeria is acting as if you cannot take Nigeria as if Nigeria is the first country that came to the earth. Bam. That must now start trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what can I eat, what must I not eat, how can I work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there is no child that you give birth to today that child will tell you what may I eat, oh, the only kind of water I drink is if you go and fetch water from River Bene. That's the only water that the child will drink. You can child, you are a strange child. Throw, some people will throw the child away because who has started to go and fetch water from River Bene? You will tell him this is, this is the same water that your elder brother drank, the same water me, your mother, that I drank, the same water everybody has been drinking. Do you understand? What Nigeria is doing is that Nigeria is behaving like a newborn baby, that everything that is needed for it must be special. No! People have gone through the same path over the years and they have come to some solid truths that if you are going to administer a country, especially a country that, is, that has multiple ethnicities, these are the ways you must govern them. People have to have some form of autonomy. And that's why America was able to grant some autonomy to the different states that were there. That, you know, and I'm, wow, it's 120 already. It's 120. It's 120, and I, do, I don't like to take people's time. But basically, but, you know, people have, Try these things. Don't use Nigeria for experiment. It's like economics. Economics has laws, basic laws of economy. You know? They are not that rigid. They are not? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. No, I'm talking about laws generally. For instance, law might now. No, I'm talking about laws. I'm talking about laws generally. For instance, if you say, if you say that, look. For instance, there's, there's, I mean, there are some laws in economics that are universal, yeah. that are universal, okay? Like, if there is scarcity... Like, diminishing returns. Diminishing, diminishing returns, for instance. Yeah. Diminishing returns. Do you understand? The more, the more... There's the law of demand and supply. Sure. Now, you cannot say because you are Nigeria, you want to break the law of demand and supply, but still keep prices at equilibrium. It will not work. You are not the first country to try it. People have tried it, and they have... See me, people have tried it. I mean, somebody, imagine the first man that put his hand inside fire, that knew fire could burn. You know when the man come on that thing, he burn. He will tell you, <laughs> and that thing, he burn. You, you will not listen. You put your hand, the thing burns you. You, you will tell the top person, the top person doesn't. I mean, you will be foolish now to start trying to create as if, oh, we, we are exempt from all those laws. Me, because I'm a pastor, I can go to the dentist floor of UBA and I will jump. I'm a pastor, I don't even. See. God will tell you that he is the one that puts the law of gravity there. And the law of gravity does not care. Unless you now understand some superior law, like the law of thermodynamics, mm -hmm. then you can defy the right. law of gravity. But you don't understand the superior law and you want to break the inferior law, that is what we are finding ourselves in. So the problem is not with democracy. The problem is basically with the fact that Nigeria is not practicing democracy. Nigeria is the one that has problem, not democracy. But can it work? Yes, it can work, but it has to adhere to the principle. The problem we have is that 
people try to change the rules in the middle of the game, people try to do things that are untoward, you know, breaking. It's, it's, it's perhaps the most, it's, it's the most, it's the worst part of the problem because he doesn't need to pull a voice and he doesn't let the person who is there know that he owes his, he's been in office to the people. So he is more loyal to the people. He will be more loyal to his service chiefs than to you as, because he knows that these are the guys that know how they inflated the figures from all over. And I, and I think somebody in their question was asking you know, about figures. Yes. And those figures are in terms of the slang between the two, the two, the, the, between, between the two when regions. I, when, when I threw was an exception. Then this was an exception. But look, but, 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 but you know what, you know what, look at the next In the trajectory of elections in Nigeria, Nigeria was the lowest. From all elections they had asked in 1960, in terms of turnout, in terms of turnout. Yes, it was free and fair, you know, because there was no ballot snatching, but it wasn't free. In Lagos State, less than 10% of people in Lagos State voted for the Lagos State government. But, I mean, but you would accept it because it was your choice not to come out. But that is how democracy should work. I think that was actually the best example of a democratic um, exercise in Nigeria. And it was because you had, a, you had somebody who was trying to be neutral, you know, until, until he stopped being neutral, you know, until that happened. But I think I've covered most of that, except that I'm restructuring, because I'm going to restructuring, I know to give me until 4 o'clock, and I don't want to. I don't have anything to do. I can stay here and discuss with you till four o'clock. But for the sake of people who you know who have stuff to do, but basically, so that is so much less of a political relation and electoral process. Political relation needs to change, and that's why you have programs like this. Because I actually believe that one of the problems that we have in Nigeria, and the truth is this, I think, and um, Tonua, I think you can put off the, you can, I think that's the, okay, let me end, okay, but you edit this out, please. Okay, yeah, 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 but you, 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 you remove this. You remove this. Um, because I think, you know, as we, as we continue.